Transhumanism is the idea that man is merging with technology. And Marvin Minsky asked the question, will robots inherit the earth? And he says, yes, they will, but they will be our children. Transhumanism is a term used for a broad range of ideas that technology is greatly enhancing human capabilities. This means everything from bionic limbs, brain implants, artificial intelligence, to even someday uploading our minds to the internet. And we have already a symbiotic relationship with our technology. And in that sense, we're already transhuman. And I'm sure many of you here today brought your smartphones with you. But, the, but transhumanism is the future of connectedness. It is technology as an extension of ourselves. So how do we get from where we are today to this science fiction future? Well, rarely are there major technological jumps. Technology usually follows a very predictable evolutionary path. And it's the groundwork that's laid by these previous technologies that allow these new levels to be achieved. So for example, the cell phone infrastructure that was created allowed for the rise of, of uh, mobile computing. And the internet allowed for the rise of social networks and cat videos. <laughs> but it's, it's hard to imagine where these advances take us as a species because we're only able to observe these small incremental steps along the way. Now, I believe that the pace of technology will evolve to the point where biology will become the limiting factor. So how many thoughts can you hold on in your mind at once? Two, maybe three? How many of you are still memorizing phone numbers? So we've already begun the process of augmenting the capacity of our minds onto our devices. So let's take a look at how far we've come. Today, the smartphone in your pocket has more computing power than all of NASA in 1969 when it sent two astronauts to the moon. The Sony PlayStation of today, which costs about 300 bucks, is 150 times more powerful than a IBM supercomputer from 1997 that then cost millions of dollars. The iPhone that you have in your pocket, the iPhone of today, is 40 times more powerful than the original iPhone, and that was just released six years ago. And it's seven times more powerful than the Mars Curiosity rover. So one of the principles of this evolution in technology is that technology is getting smaller, faster, cheaper, and more powerful every day. And in terms of physical size, it's 100 times smaller every decade. And this, this principle is known as Moore's Law. And it's the idea that technology will grow exponentially, or double about every two years. And Ray Kurzweil explains it in 30 steps. And if we take 30 linear steps versus exponential steps, so we just do 30 steps, it'd be one, two, three, up to 30. And that's simple, we all know that. But 30 exponential steps, two, four, eight, 16, 32, by the time you get to 30, you've arrived at a billion. And this is the type of growth that enables us to carry supercomputers in our pockets that once used to fill an entire building. And in the future, will allow us to carry computers the size of a blood cell. So let's connect some of these futuristic dots. Let's look at a possible roadmap for the future. For the last few years, Immersive has been researching emotion-aware computing. And in this video, you're seeing that a webcam is able to interpret individual facial muscles. And by training that computer, we can teach it to learn what a smile is, what a negative reaction is. And we've trained these machines to interpret and understand human emotions. So currently, there's about a billion and a half cameras that are enabled into your uh, laptops and your cameras and your uh, phones. But over the next five years, these numbers will double. And this provides solutions for those with autism. Smart cars that can detect drowsy or distracted drivers, or allow robots to develop a form of synthetic empathy to understand and interpret human intent. Now, wearables are widely believed to be the next big thing, and the concept of wearables isn't a new idea. 
For thousands of years, there have been tattoos and piercings and jewelry. And it symbolizes who we are and where we come from. I'm sure many of you may have, you know, fitness trackers that you wear already. But in the near future, your, fa your family, your friends will have computers embedded into their clothing, in addition to their wrists and their glasses. But further along the wearable continuum will be things like embeddables, like small sensors that are placed underneath your skin. And as technology becomes smaller, cheaper, and more powerful, 50 billion devices will be connected over the next decade. And the internet will be more like a utility, like electricity. It'll be something you plug into. And this invisible force will connect all of these fragmented systems, becoming a digital nervous system for the planet that you, me, everything we interact with will become a part of. In a sense, the Internet of Things has is, is already begun. We have a number of sensors in our smartphones. The average sensor has GPS, accelerometers, altimeters, and a number of others. But this is just the beginning. And the real power comes when these devices begin to talk to each other. So devices in your home will adjust for the optimal energy usage. And your alarm clock will set itself based on your calendar. It'll check weather conditions. And these agents will run in the background taking care of you. And soon thereafter, you won't just wear technology, but you'll ingest it. Smart pills powered by your body, using the same principle that allows a potato to power a light bulb, will monitor your vital signals for up to 72 hours, and it'll provide real-time insights on your health wirelessly to your doctor. And if this sounds a bit science fiction, it's already received FDA approval, and it's expected to be released in late 2015. So if that wasn't weird enough for you, <laughs> Body 2.0 will include artificial eyes with zoom capabilities, infrared sensors, and night vision will be possible. And the prosthetic limbs of the future will be even more flexible and powerful than our original organic limbs that we have today. Retinal implants in a few years will allow the blind to see and recognize faces. And there are already arms that are controlled by human thought using a small implant in the brain. And if you think Inception was just a movie, MIT scientists have implanted memories into mice. They've isolated an individual memory in a mouse's brain and induced recall of that memory by forcing those neurons to fire. And researchers have also been able to pinpoint memories and erase them eliminating them without affecting other memories. So in the future, it may be possible uh, to remove or implant memories and even treating things like dementia, Alzheimer's, post-traumatic stress, or personal traumas, or other types of neurological disorders. Now on the left, what you're looking at is a random YouTube clip. But on the right, it's a clip reconstructed from brain activity using an MRI. Now stop and think about that for a minute. This is the beginning of the age of mind reading. We're at early steps now in the research for seeing through another person's eyes. Perhaps one day it could record your dreams. And by the way, this video is about three years old, so they've come quite a bit further since then. Computer chips won't just be in your laptop or in your phone. Doctors will implant them in our brains and they'll restore sight to the blind and hearing to the deaf. Today, there are already 300,000 people with cochlear implants. It's a form of a neural prosthetic that allows certain types of deaf people to hear. And Michio Kaku describes brain implants as your very own augmented mind. And this is the beginning of the brain net, a possible successor to the internet, a form of virtual telepathy that will allow you to create music, drive a car, communicate with other people, and even surf the web at the speed of thought. Movies will no longer be these two-dimensional slate tablets that you look into and blast sound at you. They'll be fully immersive experiences, complete with feeling and emotion the way the director originally intended. Everything is stored, every memory recorded, and available on a cloud service. And mind uploading will allow your friends to share their digital vacation experiences that never actually took place. It all just happened in their mind similar to Total Recall. 
About a million and a half years ago, the stone axe was the most sophisticated item on the planet. But for 50,000 generations, early man used the same stone tools with very little innovation. Until one day, an ancient ancestor decided to put water inside of an ostrich egg. And he buried that ostrich egg into the ground. And by doing that, he tapped into something that was truly remarkable for the human species. Imagination. And these creative people, they lived on. Imagination is an insurance policy for problems in the future. And we are the species that transcends and transforms. It is what we are. And it's how we advance and extend our reach. But our biology hasn't changed in 200,000 years. We're still the same anxious and aggressive hunters that we once were. Perhaps we have not yet reached the pinnacle of human potential. Now, I realize that this may seem far-fetched in science fiction, and that some of these ideas maybe are a bit spooky. And that's simply human nature. And there are certainly ethical and moral dilemmas that we'll face as we go through this process. A recent uh, survey reports that 72% of the U.S. population uh, is not interested in brain implants. About 53% think that it's probably a change for the worse, even if it could augment memories or increase our mental capacities. But that all changes with the children of today. Some call them digital natives. This is my son. And to him and his generation, anything that isn't computerized, digital, or touch-enabled will seem unnatural. To them, the smartphone is already an extension of their brain. To them, the smartphone and uh, mind-uploading powered exoskeletons will be just a part of life. And transhumanism will seem just as natural as evolution. And anyone who doesn't follow suit will seem thoroughly inhuman. What new things could we accomplish if we didn't have the limitation of biology? What if our thoughts weren't limited to the two or three things that we can think about at once? What if we could explain our thoughts and feelings without the limiting barrier of words? Maybe we could explore the stars, save the planet, or enhance lives for people here on Earth. There's a lot to be hopeful for. And technology is not a panacea. There are many facets that make up this complex array of risks and benefits. But why wait until a breakthrough in designer babies before we begin the discussion? Or until nanotechnology is at our doorstep before we consider the risks and dangerous implications? Now, I believe that the future is hopeful. And I'd like to share another quick video called The Future is Ours. And it was created by my friend and director, Michael Morantz. And it's a video that's an inspiring message of hope. So I hope you enjoy it. Climate change. Deadly earthquake. A suicide bomber. Terrorism. Nuclear device in the heart of the nation's capital. It's no wonder that we're pessimistic. It's no wonder that people think that the world is getting worse. But perhaps that's not the case. Perhaps we forget that we've only just begun. Doing what's never been done before is intellectually seductive, whether or not we deem it practical. What we're seeing is unfathomably new possibilities all of a sudden becoming available to us. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. You have to trust in something. Your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. We truly are living in an extraordinary time. And many people forget this. So now technically your device is on. <laughs> Can you tell? Can you hear me? <laughs> the yearning to do what we do in the service of something larger than ourselves. Where did we come from? Are we alone in the universe? What is the future of the human race? When you conduct those exercises, innovation follows just as day follows night. We can do this. I know we can because we've done it before. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Terence McKenna said, you are an explorer and you represent our species. The greatest good you can do is to bring back a new idea because our world 
is endangered by the absence of good ideas. Our world is in crisis because of an absence of consciousness. My goal is that I've awakened something within you. The world of possibilities is at our doorstep. Let's embrace it. Push humanity forward. Thank you.